By October of 2206, the very first colony ship made by mankind was finished. It would not begin its journey until 2207, but for now, the UNS Persepolis was full on display for all the people to see. Those who would embark on the journey would spend the next coming weeks on the vessel itself to get accustomed to its environment and its procedure for which it had trained during the last year. It was scheduled to reach Barnard's star system at around February of 2207. Coverage of the voyage would be closely monitored and broadcast via live feed for everyone to see, listen or read. The UNS scout by now had reached their newest destination in the form of the Withreli system. A bright red sun was surrounded by a large number of bigger sized planets. There were not that many signs of space nebula or asteroid belts for that matter. It was a rather serene image that gave one the value of peace of mind. In the first week of 2207, word got out from the detachment of the UNS Sojourner that headed towards the asteroid that was littered with ship parts. The asteroid was evidently used as a junkyard by someone at some point in the distant past. All manner of discarded machinery and metallic refuse had been deposited inside the asteroid's weak gravity well, being slowly pulled into the jumble of debris that now covered its surface. There was nothing of particular value to be found here, but a lot of metal could be salvaged by a mining station. As it was 2207, the colony ship went on its way to inhabit a new world. The beginning of the voyage was immortalized with an elaborate ceremony where important politicians attended, including Miss Mwanga. As there were thousands aboard the ship, most of the regular citizens and non-essential crew were put into cryosleep to avoid chaos on board. With colonization now a factor, Tao Kong, head researcher of Society Research Division, was tasked with coming up with ways to increase and ensure population growth rapidly. He had his team look into genome mapping, mapping the genome of an individual through the sequencing of their DNA would open up tailored medical treatments and therapies. Disease was of course a concern when being exposed to a new planet environment, and this should help cope with that. The interesting occurrence in the soul system, the original home of humankind, was that a new generation of children, those of seven years or younger, were growing up in a society where space travel to new systems and colonizations of planets were the norm, not the aberration. Having them grow up in this environment would surely sprout a generation that would flourish in both creative, philosophical, and ethic thinking when it came to these issues. The UNS Sojourner had reached its new destination in the form of the Sterl system. The crew at hand was a bit smaller, since their detachment had left for Earth. The bulk of the main staff would also be replaced and reinstated with fresh manpower after having reached one more system after this. As the charts expanded even more as mankind was mapping out the galaxy, it became clear once more that two science ships would not be enough to cover every direction. A third ship was built that would be done within two months to head on its exploration journey. Halfway through the year, the UNS Potomac was tasked with heading towards the Tau Ceti system and establish a base here. Though there were no interesting anomalies in the form of planets to be found here, it did have potential for resource gathering. In the months that the Potomac was out of service, it had been upgraded, restocked, and part of the crew was replaced with new, fresh faces. By now, the colony ship had reached the Barnard system. It was now but a matter of weeks before they would reach their new home. It would still take a very long time for it to be completely finished and worthy of being named colonized, but it was a bright start. With the colonization underway, the planet was also dubbed a new name. It was named Ankara, symbolizing the anchor thrown out by a ship once a new place had been discovered. As the ship was getting closer, slowly but surely, the first of the colonists were being woken up. They had to acclimate the first few days to walking and being active again. Most of them had traversed the journey harmlessly, though there were a few who suffered some minor health issues. Before the ship arrived, a message was broadcasted to Earth's government stating that the Sojourner had stumbled upon something in the Sturl system. While scanning the asteroid belt, 
the science team of Karim Farzad had found some sort of anomaly. It came from the vicinity of the asteroid EUD 36367. As the third science vessel had been built, just as before, a leader needed to be chosen to oversee its journey and endeavors. The honor befell on scientist Erhard Müller, a scientist with an impressive career that he kick-started when he was only a teenager. He would be commandeering the UNS Santa Maria. His crew would go beyond the maelstrom to see if there were more useful resources out there to justify claiming more systems in the name of mankind. By the year of 2208, the Tau Ceti system had also been interwoven in the earthly jurisdiction. With so many science ships now underway to different systems, one came to realize that the surveying took up most of the crew's time. To aid them in this, head physicist Pratamesh Upatyay was tasked with implementing automated exploration protocols. An advanced AI would aid science officers in their task to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. The science ship would be able to explore the galaxy with the help from an AI. The first version of this AI would be labeled Darwin. Then on March 1st of the year 2208, the first human colonist set foot in their new home. The colony ship had gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta on one of the several continents that could be found on Ankara. This temperate, forested region would serve as an ideal first landing site. The ship had been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core was in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters had sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists began to disembark in large numbers, the first human city on an alien world. Though the colonists were disembarking and the first steps were underway, it would not officially be colonized until the year of 2212, four years later. During those four years, the settlers would help to build multiple facilities to await more ships to land carrying more civilians and supplies. Nature would then take its course as they would populate the planet. Back in the Sol system, head of engineering Na Zhang was tasked with researching nanomechanics. Advanced instrumentation would allow for the study and practical application of physical systems at nanometric scales. At the end of the year, the UNS Santa Maria had finally traversed the long route towards the system beyond the maelstrom labeled Yamal. They would survey the planets and moons over the coming months. Though there was a bit more light here, compared to the maelstrom due to the central sun, the light it embedded was not that bright and even this system had still an eerie and lonely vibe to it. Now with the colony being established on Ankara, it was necessary to send in more people, both for manpower, knowledge, governing and expansion on the planet itself. Therefore more people were needed to sign up for the next colony embarking and with the help of an aggressive marketing campaign, the less fortunate elements of their society would be flocking to the colony ships. Then finally news got out on the anomaly found near EUD 36367. Among the asteroids surrounding EUD, they had discovered an alien ship adrift. It was not responding to any attempts to hail them. If this was due to it being unable to interpret their signal or some other reason was unsure. Science officer Karim Farzad recommended that a construction ship would tow it out of the debris field. If left untouched, it was running the risk of being crushed by the asteroids. In the first month of 2210, the campaigning started to elect a new president. The results would be announced on April 1st. People were very happy with Mwanga's term as she launched humanity to new systems and even new planets to colonize. It would now be up for someone new to take the next steps. Some believe that the next person to hold the reins would have to deal with more discoveries and stances on alien life as more discoveries were done over time. Those who were running for president were Governor Hui Wu, who would never be elected after the scandal surrounding his health, and head scientist Pratamesh Upatyai and Tao Kong. These two were more balanced in terms of votes. There were those during talk shows who joked that it better be Tao Kong as Pratamesh had a far too difficult name to continually pronounce. The UNS Sojourner then stumbled upon another anomaly. 
It seemed that the Stroll system held many secrets within its humongous asteroid belt. A vessel of some kind had crashed into the surface of one particular asteroid labeled Z994. Wreckage from the craft could still be found within the impact crater. Another detachment was sent in as the rest went on to a new system to explore. A new colony was being established. A new president would soon be in control and humanity continued to expand its borders.